Part three, setting up Pi Star, putting together a hotspot or purchasing one, however you want to do it. And going into Pi Star and setting it up with all of your information for whatever mode you want to use, your call sign, your subscriber ID for DMR, and all the other kinds of good stuff. Let's get started. Shut up and sit down. One thing on that configuration screen that yeah. it took me a couple times to realize you can't change every section and hit save mm -hmm. once. You got to finish your changes in a section, hit save, let it kind of do a soft reboot, right? And then go on to the next section. You can't right. just edit the page with a bunch of changes and click one of them and think it applies to them all because they only apply that section and all your other changes will um, gone back. Right. Yeah. So what it does is it stops services it, and it and it applies changes, and then it restarts your services on the back end. Yeah, that's what it's doing. But yes, good point there. And and somebody, I think somebody mentioned in the chat about running too many. And they said all these different options. You can run multiple options at the same time. You can set your hotspot up to run DMR, D Star, YSF, P twenty five, all at the same time. I don't suggest doing that typically because, and I really don't suggest doing that on a repeater. And the reason is because all of your DMR users driving down the road listening to your repeater, they're not going to be able to hear activity on YSF or P25 or NXDN when those users are using the repeater. And there's always a lag time after the transmission ends, after the conversation ends. There's a lag time where if you try to key up the repeater in another mode, it might not key up. And it can create issues. If, uh, if two guys are talking on D-Star and you've got D-Star and DMR selected, two guys are talking on D-Star, maybe, we'll, maybe they'll take a two or three minute pause. They get out of the car or something. They said, I'll be right back. And then, and then two other guys get on their DMR and start talking. Well, when the D-Star guys come back and try to talk again, they're not going to hear the DMR activity on their D-Star radio. So they're not going to know that the repeater's in use. And they're going to try to key it up and get bonked and they're going to get frustrated and Unless everybody understands and knows that it's a multi-mode repeater and you might have different stuff here and there, I have found that it's it's problematic to run multi multi modes on a repeater like that. Um, if you want to want to run it on your own hotspot at the house, more power to you. Go for it because you know you're probably the only one using it and you know what you've set up. But on a repeater, I usually suggest nah, just set up a different repeater and give give a give D Star access to all the DMR D Star guys twenty four seven. Same thing for DMR, same thing for YSF. That's my opinion. People may not agree, and that's okay. Temporary but, Offline says um, <clears throat> Pi Zeros are not um, powerful enough for more than one mode. That's probably true. Yeah, that's probably true. This is a Pi 3 plus B board, so I don't have that problem. Um, and there might be some, uh, some restrictions on the radio buttons you can click in a Pi Zero Pi Star device. Um, that's very possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a Pi, mm -hmm. Pi Zero is not nearly as powerful as a Pi 3. Pi 3 Plus B, and the Pi 4 boards for sure. Mm. So, <laughs> Dan says, going to do enough research to freeze myself from buying any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Good that, idea. <laughs> that usually happens to me. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll spend one more night researching this. Right, right, totally. <laughs> that's what I'm doing on the Aero antenna right now. Yeah, that's I'm about a good to idea. Buy it one, then I was like, all right, let me look something else up. Let me look something yeah. else up. That's a good idea. All right, the next section down is your general information section. Again, this is your host name, which we already discussed. That I found that to be problematic. I just like to use the IP. That's me. Um, if you've got your, if you're running a custom DNS server on your own network. You'll probably not have any problems with this at all. I'm not running a custom DMS server on my own network, so I'm not doing that. But some people who are smarter than me can get that to work, and that's great. I think that's if you want to do that, then go for it. I've got better things to do with my time than worry about the a host name on a Pi Star, but that's me. Um, the node call sign that comes up is uh, Mike One Alpha Bravo Charlie. That's just a generic call sign that comes up in there. So you put your own call sign in there, just like that. Uh, the radio frequency you can put you can kind of set where you want to just don't set it on something that's going to interfere with something else so I would suggest you know do do some listening on uh, on an analog uh, on the analog side of the frequency for a day or two or maybe like an hour or two make sure there's no digital noise that you can hear and if it's a quiet frequency go ahead and choose that generally speaking if you're just going to be at home you know 
it's not going to be that big of a deal, but, and you're not running a lot of power. I've been running mine on 434.450 four, for a long, long time. And, uh, and I've never had any interference at home. So, so I, I'm going to stick with that. Your latitude and longitude, you can set those in here if you want to. Your town. Grapevine, Texas. Country is, yeah, U.S. Okay, good. URL here doesn't really do anything um, other than just uh, if, if you go into, if, you, if you're connecting to like a Pi, to a, uh, maybe an APRS system, which you can get to, there's a, there's a host down there, which you can choose. And maybe to the Brandmeister dashboard, it might be able to see that somehow. If you've got your own, you want to put your own QRZ page in there, or you want to put your own website in there, you can do that. It doesn't really change anything specifically for the way the PyStar operates from your end. So you can change that if you want to. I'm not going to jack with that. We're going to go to radio modem type here, and we're going to pick SM, uh, I'm sorry, STM32-DVM, MMDVM underscore HS, Raspberry Pi Hat GPIO. That's generally the most common one used. There's some others that you can see there's a big list in here. DV Mega has some, ICOM repeater controller, GMSK modem, DV repeater. There's a DVAP, which is an old USB stick. Again, PyStar will run on a lot of different stuff. Okay, so if you're using a Raspberry Pi, three or four board generally speaking you're going to you're going to be running this STM32 DVM board so this like does your um p node there have that printed on the back of it somewhere which when you modem type to use yes it does when you put when you, it doesn't have this printed on it but it with the instruction the setup instructions that come with the TGIF that is in there in okay. fact in fact if you purchase a TGIF spot they will set all this stuff up for you okay Okay, they will set it all up for you. If you don't mind giving them your SSID and password, they'll even set up your own Wi-Fi for you. Now, I don't like to do that. I, that I'm smart enough to, to connect things to my own Wi-Fi. I've got a pretty robust internal network at home, um, so I don't like to do that. But they will, if you're the type of person who says, I don't really care, I don't, some guy set up my network, I don't really know much about it, they'll set that up for you so that when you get the hotspot, all you got to do is plug and play. But that's not the purpose of today's video. Today's no. video is to show you how to do all this. So node type is public and private. It's defaulted to private. If you are going to put this node on the back of a public repeater and put it 200 feet on, on a 200 foot tower, then you'd want to change it to public. But realistically, this doesn't matter much at all as far as the way the operation of the, of the device works. Um, APRS host, I like it. It defaults to euro.aprs2.net, which is Europe. I like to change this to something in the USA that's closer to me. Get a little bit better signal. There's one in Arkansas. There's an Arkansas one right there. I thought that there was one. Nope. I thought there was one in Dallas, but I'm not seeing it now. Okay. I'm just going to go to the Arkansas one because that's pretty close to me. Right there. Um, my time zone, which is America, Chicago. That's correct. That's my correct time zone. Dashboard language is defaulted to English UK. You can change that to English US if you want. English UK is not much different <laughs> as far as the terminology on the PyStar device goes. And then we're going to apply changes there as well. And I'm going to let that stop and restart services and go from there. That will take about 20 seconds. Mm. That's yeah. usually normal. Yeah. So. Yeah. On uh, When I was setting up my MMDVM board, and um, that mm. took me about 40 minutes to get the right modem type because it wasn't really printed clearly on it. I had a couple, ah. of, a couple of call signs. Yes. But I was clicking on the one that says Pi, not oh. Nano. And I thought the Nanos were the small two inch by an inch and a half boards because they're the smaller. And I had that. that Generally, that, that's true. And then I had the full size board that was okay. almost the size of the Pi. Okay. So I was like, well, this is not the Nano. And I mm. didn't select it. And um, finally, I just started clicking one, clicking mm -hmm. some and it finally started working. I was like, oh, I guess this is a Nano board. Yeah. Okay, so the Smoke and Ape says this, the board has the modem type printed on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably true, but again, I don't see it right now. I didn't put this together. It came uh, pre-assembled pre in the C4 Labs case. I don't see it on the bottom of the board. It's probably on the top of the board, which I can't see right now inside of this case. But it came with an instruction, uh, setup instruction, that told you what the, the correct... Uh, modem was so again it depends on if you're buying one or building one 
Okay. And if you're buying one, whoever you're buying from should tell you that. Mm -hmm. Bridgecom Skybridge, um, Zoom Spot from HRO, TGIFSpot.com, um, N5BOC makes a good hotspot. He's here in Texas. Um, uh, Evan, is it Evan or Ethan in the Ham Radio Crash Course that makes a custom uh, hotspot? And those are pretty decent looking hotspots. Um, so that'll that'll be given to you on the purchased product information that you buy, whatever you buy from. The public private thing is only for England. Use public. You always use public. Oh well, I'm not in England. Well, I'm, so. I was wondering what's that option really for. I don't know. I, think- I was. I would have. I, I would have used. Um, I would have used public if it was on a public repeater that people were that multiple people were going to be using. I've never used. I've never changed mine from private though. I use mine on private all the time. And again, that's what it defaults does, to. Does that lock it to a call sign? Does that? No. 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 I don't. I don't know exactly what that does. I've never researched that part of it. So it doesn't affect. However, um, however, the Pi Star works as a hotspot. So mm-hmm. it doesn't. It, to me, it's never really been worth researching. So. Doug says, only run on a Pi Zero, never try to Pi Three. Will I notice any major debt? Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, I think that's what uh, I think that's what um, Tank is saying. And um, temporary offline. Yeah, I think that's what To yeah. was talking about as well. It it's, runs much faster. It's faster. It's much faster on the boot process. Much faster on the boot process. Uh, the Pi Three and Four boards also have an Ethernet connector. So if you want Wi-Fi only. Pi Zero is great. Pi, this will do Wi-Fi. Pi Zero will do Wi-Fi. That's fine. If you want something that's hardline Ethernet, this has that option where Pi Zero doesn't. So it depends mm-hmm. on what you're trying to do. So um, IK04 <laughs> says it's weird privacy laws. I, yeah, that's one reason they can't use radio ad, ID.net and they have to use the hamdigital.dl, I think it is. That, mm. uh, um, I think it's. I think that's what it is. But yeah, yeah, it's the privacy laws in the UK. There's... There's some I've read a little bit about that. I'm not privy with them with them all. Uh, Denzel says, "Where can I buy MMDVM boards in bulk?" That's a good question. I don't know. I've never tried. Um, contact W9DXM Whiskey Nine Delta X Ray Mike Jason. Um, he used to build the DX Mini hotspots. And he used to buy this stuff in bulk, I think. When you say bulk, I don't know how many you mean. Do you mean like 10 or 100? There might be a difference. I don't know if you can get them in 100, quite frankly. Um, but I've never, tr- I've never tried to buy them in bulk, so I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So let's go back over here. So now that we it's rebooted, here's all my information that's saved. All of this stuff right here, this firewall configuration, this is all the default stuff. Dashboard access is private. In other words, you can't get to it from outside of a public IP from, from the world, the wide area network as opposed to the local area network. You can turn that on and set like a special pa- username and password for it if you want to. Uh, I've never tried to jack with that. I've got a way to get into my network from anywhere anyway. I don't need a way specifically to get into my hotspot. Uh, IRC DB gateway remote is set to private. SSH access is also set to private. And meaning that you can't connect to the device via an SSH PuTTY type session from outside of the device. So we, I'm going to show you in the dashboard here where you can actually go into an SSH session inside of the device itself. But you can turn that to public and, and, and open it up to, to more access if you want to. Auto AP is on. That's what I was talking about. So if it ever loses internet connection, it's going to assume that you have traveled outside the Wi-Fi area and it will turn on its own automatic access point and allow you to connect to it, do a rescan of Wi-Fi and connect to another network if you want to. And then UPnP uh, is on by default. Do you want your Pi to create its own firewall rules for use with D-Star? So that's a D-Star thing. But that is basically what you need there now, what you can do also is you can go into, uh, so if we click on admin mode, we've got all this stuff here, and you, it's just kind of a different view. You can see which, uh, oh, also, see these modes enabled? They're all gray right now. That's because when I was in here, I didn't click on any of this. All of these are turned off right now. So I'm going to click on DMR mode, and I'm going to save that, apply changes. I thought we are doing D-Star. 
No, I'm not doing D star. Why would I do D star? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I could do D star. I did D star the other day. I was using my 705 on D star the other day through a through a hotspot. Okay, so now once I apply that MMDVM host configuration, it adds another menu down here underneath the general configuration, which we already set. It adds this DMR configuration. If I would turn on DSTAR or YSF, it would add those down here as well. These don't light up until you actually click the, the button on. So now I can choose which uh, server I want to connect to. And I've got, let's see, all these servers. These are HB Link servers, presumably. They're Seabridge 2.0. That's my server. Crazy Horse Network. I've always wondered what that is. Crazy I, Horse Network. I don't know. I don't know. It's in there. I didn't put that in there. That was in there by default. If anybody knows what Crazy Horse Network is, put it in the chat. Uh, so these are a bunch of DMR Plus servers here. There's TGIF Network right there. And Brandmeister. Let's see. Brandmeister. There it is. United States. There's three of them. 3101, 3102, 3103. Generally, I connect to 3103 just for the heck of it. I used to connect to 3102 because I think that one's in Texas. It was having some problems at some point in time, and I just never... I started using 3103 and never went back. You can set your DMR ESSID, which is... What that means is... It is going to use... Okay. Oh, here's something else that came up. Okay, I forgot about that. In the general configuration, this CS7 DMR ID was not here before I turned on this DMR mode. Okay, so now it wants me to enter my DMR ID. 317-48141. That's one of my DMR ID. That's the one I use for all my hotspots. Okay, so now what it will do, and this is useful if you have multiple hotspots running at the same time. Number one, if you have multiple hotspots running in the same, uh, in the same location on the same mode at the same time, all powered up, you're going to want to make sure they're all on different frequencies. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to create a boot loop. You don't want to do that. Okay? So if you're going to run multiple hotspots, that's okay. But you're going to want to make sure they're on different frequencies, number one. The second thing you can do is change this DMR ESS ID, the extended ID to make your DMR ID eight or nine digits long. So what I can do is I can put, if, no, if none is selected, then when this hotspot connects to the network, it's going to show up as 3148141. If I click on this and I say, okay, this is going to be 01, then it will show up on the network as 3148141.01, and it'll add two digits to the back of my DMR ID. That way, if I have multiple hotspots on, if I got one in my car, if I got one that sits down in Galveston at my house down there and that I leave down there, which I don't, but if I did, I could put one at the deer lease if we had inter full-time internet there, which we don't. And then I could have one or two running at the house, have all these hotspots connected at the same time, hopefully on different frequencies. But then, as long as they're not showing up on the Brandmeister network with the same exact ID, then it will it will cause less confusion on the Brandmeister network, and I'll be able to, to uh, kind of make a list of which one is where. I'll know where all my stuff is. And if one of them goes down, I'm like, oh, that one went down. That's the one at this location. So I know which one it is. So that's a good uh, that's a good way to keep if you've got multiple hotspots to keep them all separated. 